If you're not part of my team, you probably don't know that, but I don't care at all about 2K tests, 1K tests, 5K tests in the winter. My philosophy is don't test what you don't prepare your athletes for. So right now, November, December, January, it's now, what is it today? November 28th, 2020. This is not the kind of time where you want to do a 2 or 5K test. Why? Because we do a lot of basic steady state training, quote unquote, and a lot of strength training. So this is anything but high intensity. Why should you possibly do a 2 or 5K test right now and do high intensity testing if you don't prepare your body for high intensity testing. The results you get have no correlation whatsoever with the training progress. And think of that. You're doing, let's say you do a lot of um, aerobic training right now. So between, if, if you're familiar with lactate, it's anything between 0.5 to 4 minimal if you consider four millimole to be your actually true anaerobic threshold. Why would you test high intensity if you know that aerobic training does not necessarily improve immediately your high intensity capacity? It's complete nonsense, it's useless. And I don't even know why people do that. No offense to anybody, but I simply, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. If you don't test high intensity, all right, I get it, it doesn't make sense, all right, what do you do then? How do you know, you, how, how do you know you're getting better? It's very simple. You want to track the things you do on a frequent basis. For example, my athletes know that we have about two weeks on, one week off, on an average. This is not the same for everybody, but on an average you can say that we have two load weeks and one recovery week. That's important because this is where it becomes stronger. Let's say we have a session that would be 30 minutes of intensity level at O. O is about two millimole lactate, which is the aerobic threshold. If you have no way to measure lactate, it doesn't matter because we also know that two millimole of lactate or intensity level O has a perceived load of around um, two to 2.5. A 2.5 on a scale of one easy as pi and six passing out is a number. And then you may ask, okay, how do you know? How do, how do I know whether or not this is a two? How, how do I know? You know, it's that simple. The thing is, and there are actually quite interesting studies about this, no matter what you test, and I've done a lot of lactate testing, glucose testing, uh, you know, heart rate, whatever, you name it, nothing, and if you talk to scientists who are really in the game, nothing is reliable. There is no reliable way of measuring your performance in terms of are you, really, are you truly in the right training zone? Are you truly hitting the effective levels? You don't, you don't, you don't know. So the most effective way to analyze that is your perceived load. And you can come up with any scale you like. I just use a one to six scale. So one is easy as pie. If you take a walk outside and you're taking it very easy and you don't brush, you just have a good time, do a bit of window shopping, whatever, you have about a perceived load of one. If you sleep, you should be close to zero. So um, if, you do a, if you do a race and it's about do or die and, and you're the last 300 meters of a race and you don't know if you can make another stroke, that's a six. It is a six, a straight six. But most people never get to around a six. They get to around a five to five and a half and they fear to death to go close to six. But that's a different story. And now that we know we want to hit a two to 2.5, that's already a number. And additionally, because you can't really judge your intensity, your, your performance intensity with one parameter only, we have a stroke rate, 19 to max 21. It depends on whether or not you're an explosive athlete or not. Then you should have a heart rate of around, let's say 155, if your max heart rate is around 200, but that's just a rule of thumb. So I do have a clear list for my athletes, a percentage structure. So if this is your maximum heart rate, these are the heart rate zones you should approximately have during the workouts. But this is a rule of thumb because no parameter is super reliable. And heart rate, oh boy, it is so volatile. You do 15 minutes steady state and then you say, okay, oh, oh yeah, next year it's gonna be that race. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. Oh, you think of this, boom, 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 your heart rate goes up. You're still hitting 150 watts. Why is your heart rate going up? Because you're nervous. 
Heart rate is triggered by many things because the heart has to cover anything and everything that's going on within the body. So of course, everything, even stress hormones or just think of something exciting will boost your heart rate, you know, unless you're stoic, but I don't know anybody who is. There is your HR, your heart rate. Let's say a 150 to 155. Good. We have left out one very interesting parameter, and this parameter is speed. Now, in the boat, speed is difficult to judge. If the water is cold, speed is going to be slower. Cold water, more density, slower boat speed. If you row in shallow water versus deeper water, your boat speed will decrease. Shallow the water, the slower it's going to be. If you are on the by rower or on an erg, the speed is more reliable. You pull 160 watts with a stroke rate of 19, which is quite high, and a heart rate of 150. Two weeks later, doing similar routines, this is 30 minutes at O, which is two mil, you're pulling 160 watts, stroke rate 19, and you have a heart rate of 150. And two weeks later, you find yourself, all right, you still pull 160 watts, but you actually happily could decrease to 18 strokes a minute, and your heart rate is going to 146. But that's a number. This is what you should be looking for. So, by this I mean you are, your body started to work more economically. And especially in these low aerobic zones, it is important to teach the body how to use fat as the main source of energy to, to produce glucose from fat and to produce ATP from glucose that was sourced from fat. And the reason why it's so important is fat is basically an endless resource. It doesn't matter how skinny you are or how, how fat you are, um, fat is something that you have probably more readily available than carbs and certainly than ATP. Therefore, it is important to teach the body how to use fat. And another reason why it's important to teach the body how to use fat is that you want to make sure you... The, the, side note, doesn't have a lot to do with that topic, but it's so interesting. If you are aerobic, which means you are using predominantly a mix of more fat than carbs to produce glucose. Then you're sourcing from every mole of glucose, so one mole of glucose will be 36, 34 to 36, 32 to 36, depending on who you believe, mole of ATP. ATP is the prime source of energy the muscle can use which is quite a good ratio actually, but it takes a while because you have three cycles within the muscle cells. It's a long process. Once you become anaerobic, one mole of glucose will get you, listen, two mole of ATP. You're missing out on 30 to 34 moles of ATP. That's a bit crazy. And this is why this all high intensity training is not working and paying off. And I know that a lot of you athletes right now, not on my team, are making that same mistake like last year in the last 10 and 20 and 30 years. You cannot do high intensity all year round because then your body just loses the ability to generate a lot of energy from very little resources. And within a race, you cannot build up lactate forever. You just can't. The thing is, if you start a race with being anaerobic after 10 strokes, which is literally what happens with many athletes, then you're basically running on super bad fuel all the time. While your competitors who have done good and serious training, you are running on two, two mole of ATP per every mole of glucose. And additionally, your body accumulates all the lactate it cannot reuse, which is normally reused when, as, as long as you stay aerobic, a lactate is built up. But it's being reused to generate some of these 36 moles of ATP. If you do a lot of aerobic work right now, it is useless to test the 2K. It is like doing, doing I, I said this in a video before, it is like I, I study Greek, uh, the Greek language, let's say for, for six months. And then if, in rowing, you don't have that much time because you have four to six weeks for every test. I mean, it's ridiculous. 
and I, you study Greek. <laughs> and, then, and then the test comes up and you have to perform in French. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. So I don't know, your performance is not good, but I studied Greek, I studied aerobic training all the time. Why do you test me French high intensity? Ah, uh, because we need to see if you're improving. But, but let me do the training that helps me to improve in high intensity. If you want to test high intensity, of course, in the summer it's interesting. In the summer you want to know, hey, how fast is your 2K? That's super interesting. But at the right point of time, not right now. To answer the question of this video ultimately, right now what you should be checking for is the relation between your stroke rate, the watts you get out, the heart rate and the perceived load. And if that starts to improve, you're on the right track. But be careful if it improves too much too quickly and you feel like you can conquer the world, it's time to take a break. But that's a different video. All right, ladies and gents, I hope this was interesting for you. For me, it was a very important topic to talk about. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below and I'm very happy to help you. All right, all the best, take care, bye-bye. <laughs>